This is a Luftwaffe drilling. And today we're going to answer the question as to why Hermann Göring ordered 2,500 of these for the Luftwaffe in 1941. If you're a regular subscriber to our channel, then you already know that we've done this, uh, we've done lift off of drillings before. If you're not a regular subscriber, you need to do that. So make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. When I did this before, one of our viewers sent me an article from this magazine, which gives us the definitive answer. They answered it back in 1979 as to why they ordered 2,500 of these. Now, there were three theories that I have proposed in the past. And honestly, I, I couldn't figure out which one was more true than the other. But the first is, it's a survival weapon. So number one, survival weapon, they were ordered uh, for when, uh, mostly in North Africa, if a pilot was shot down, he would have a shotgun for small game and then a rifle round for a larger game. And so this would help with survival. Now, the problem with that is why would you take a very expensive uh, state-of-the-art crafted drilling that's actually engraved, case hardened. You got engraving, you've got case hardening, you've got the Luftwaffe Eagle, you've got the Luftwaffe Eagle, uh, you've got this beautiful bluing. Uh, the mechanics are just phenomenal. I'll show you that in a little bit. Why would they spend that kind of money for a survival weapon when most people, when they're shot down, they use a parachute? So when you're shot down, you're not going to grab your drilling case and jump out the door of the plane. Uh, so you would actually have to land the plane and then use this because nobody was going to pick you up for a matter of days. So it just seemed like a, a waste of money to get something this elaborate just as a survival weapon. Explanation number two was they used it during downtimes uh, in order to shoot uh, skeet. And the skeet shooting was so they could learn how to, uh, to lead the skeet and that helped them with their skills in shooting down enemy aircraft. That may be. But again, this is a pretty uh, fancy weapon to use just to practice your skeet shooting. And the third, uh, the one that I mostly embraced is Hermann Goering was uh, very famous for his hunting trip, his elaborate hunting trips for gifts to all his friends, his family, to the Luftwaffe aces and his officers. He regularly would have people come to one of his hunting cabins and he would give them gifts such as one of these. So I, I kind of thought it was what I called a boondoggle. Outside of the United States, a boondoggle is like when you're on a board of a nonprofit but you, take, uh, you have your board meetings in Bahamas so that you can spend a bunch of money and have a vacation at the same time. Uh, my thought was he spent a bunch of money on these beautiful, hand, you know, well-crafted uh, weapons and then gave them out to Luftwaffe aces and family members and friends of his who were hunting buddies. Uh, so let's take a look at this magazine and I'll t show you where we have the definitive answer. So one of our viewers watched my previous video, and this is September of 1979, Guns and Ammo. So that's a long time ago before many of you were even born. Not so much for me, but for a lot of you. Uh, and in it is an article about the Luftwaffe drilling. Here's a nice color picture of, of a, a very nice Luftwaffe drilling. Here's actually a picture of them. This is a drilling being handed up. Uh, he's, it looks like a fighter plane, Messerschmitt and he's handing it up. There's also additional pictures here, uh, shows what was in it, and it's just an article. There's uh, Rommel, we'll see what his connection is. And then it shows the Luftwaffe Flying Eagle on the stock and also on the barrel. We'll show you that on the actual drilling itself. So, so let me just uh, read you a couple excerpts from this article. So uh, just like me, the author of this article said, the assumption of this writer, along with many others, was that the, these Luftwaffe drillings were ordered by Hermann Goering to be used as gifts for favorite hunting buddies, distinguished uh, visitors, Knights Cross winners, uh, Luftwaffe aces, uh, who were guests at his hunting lodges. The fact that these were standard issue equipment to be stored within an aircraft seemed uh, highly remote, if not a downright expensive waste of money. Uh, so what he decides to do is he decides to contact uh, uh, General Adolf Galland. 
Now, General Galland was a Luftwaffe ace. He was uh, decorated, he led a squadron, and he flew planes throughout the war. Also, F after the war was over, he was actually very friendly with the Western press. I believe he wrote a book about his Luftwaffe experiences. He was interviewed on television and traveled around the world talking about his service in the Luftwaffe. So he was very he was very apt to talk very openly about his service. And a lot of uh, former German soldiers and Luftwaffe pilots, of course, preferred not to talk about their military service. Uh, but they contacted, they wrote a letter to General Galland. The following quote is from him answering my letter. In 1942 and 1943, the M30 drilling was standard equipment for our fighter uh, jets, the, the Messerschmitt 109 and the Stuka bombers. Uh, we, as we operated in, in North Africa. The purpose was to shoot animals for survival. General Gland went on to describe the uh, Luftwaffe shotgun. Uh, we also used it for trap shooting uh, during our obligatory exercise training to sharpen our eyes and reflexes uh, of the fighter pilots. Also, he mentioned that as a Luftwaffe ace, he and several of his squadron buddies uh, would go, be invited by uh, Goering on uh, f hunting trips uh, at his exclusive lodge, and many of them were gifted uh, these Luftwaffe drillings. So the answer to the question, which is it, the answer is, it was all three. They actually were used for survival weapons, and they were used for uh, skeet or trap shooting, uh, and they were also given away as gifts. Okay, so this is actually a commercial grade. This is uh, the same shotgun. It's, I guess it's the M30. Uh, it was the patent date, or it was first uh, made in the 1930s. Uh, this was used as a hunting rifle, and it, it, the scope is added. I've seen several with the same scope, and we see here that Hermann Goering had a hunting rifle. I have to assume this was one of his favorite drillings. We know he also got a gift drilling from Krigoff. That's actually in the book on Krigoffs. They have the serial number of a gun that he was gifted, I believe, in 1933 by uh, Heinrich uh, Krigoff. So he had quite a number of hunting rifles. This was one of his favorites, and he is photoed uh, with more than one of these. Uh, so this is the exact same model, and I'll just show you. This is the Luftwaffe gun. You can see this is case hardened. This probably wasn't. If it was case hardened, uh, it wore off uh, some time ago. Now, the, this one was made in the mid-30s. All of these, uh, the ones that were ordered, 2,500 of them, they were all made in 1941. Uh, I'll, turn, I'll turn this like this a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of, uh, you can see the engraving on the hunting one as opposed to the case hardening on the one for the Luftwaffe. You'll notice the handguards are pretty much the same, although the finish on the handguard, but even the checkering is the same on both. So again, one is a hunting rifle, one is a Luftwaffe contract. And then you can see this side, the checkering is the same. Uh, this is the safety function uh, on top. Uh, well, you, can, you can't really see the top very well, uh, but it is engraved, even the screws are engraved. So imagine, you know, if it's a survival weapon, why would you engrave the screws? <laughs> it seems a little excessive. This is engraved. Um, there's engraving here, engraving here, the Sour and Sun logo, case hardening, uh, just in beautiful condition. Look at this screw right here. There's engraving there as well, uh, this piece. And then, of course, that's the Luftwaffe Flying Eagle. And then on the barrel, you see the Luftwaffe Flying Eagle. And of course, the commercial model wouldn't have that. So if you watch this before, I showed how the mechanics work on this, the three barrels. And this is distinctly German. I, I'm sure other companies have picked it up. But the Germans really were the first come, come out with the drilling, the three barrels. Uh, and you can see here, it's a 12-gauge shotgun and then a, a regular rifle round for hunting. Uh, and then also, they, uh, not, for the, uh, not for the Luftwaffe ones, but you could add a scope at the top. Uh, now, I do have these snap caps so I can show you how it, it fires. That's just to keep the firing pins intact. But you just pull the lever and it pops open. Um, beautiful board, by the way, it's just, just absolutely beautiful in there. 
But that cocks it, so we'll put these in. I don't have the rifle round, but close it down. And now it's cocked and ready to go. When it's cocked, these three pins are up. When I pull the first trigger, the right barrel will fire. And then the rear button, the left barrel fires. And then the only one popped up is the rifle. And the only way it'll work, see this is the rear sight. You pop that up, see that? All I did was push that forward. Watch the rear sight. Once you pop that up, then the trigger goes to rifle round and fires the rifle. I'll do that again real quickly. Right, left, and if I try to pull this again, it does not fire. Safety on. When I pop this up, then it fires. Ingenious, isn't it? It's a very well crafted uh, uh, drilling. I don't know that they still make these today. I'm sure somebody will write in and let me know. Uh, one more thing I wanted to do is the case that it comes in with the accessories. I'm going to take this apart and put it in the case and you'll see how compactly it fits. It's actually snug as a bug in a rug. Check this out. Okay, this is the original drilling case. It just has a little bit of corrosion. You see it's uh, like a spray painted uh, green. I have seen some that have been restored, I think after the fall of the Iron Curtain. There were some that were found. Um, they were restored in terms of repainted. This one, uh, from what I can tell, is all original. There is a Luftwaffe proof mark right here. Uh, that's the only proof mark that's on this case. This is a leather strap that's on there. Uh, this does say DRGM and it looks almost like Aka, but I think it's Aku, A-K-U. Uh, made these. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. I never really paid a whole lot of attention to it, but you uh, open the case up and it lists right here all the items found inside. I don't read German, but it lists them all out. And you can see that this has insulation. There's a little bit of corrosion in here. Uh, this is an original manual. Obviously, it's in a case. Um, I mean, it's in a plastic case and it's June of 1941. The last one we showed, um, it was made in October of 41. Right here you can see the date, 6 of 1941. Uh, there's an eagle end proof that you find on all German weapons during the war. And then this is the caliber of the rifle round, which is 9.3 by 74. We'll see some of those rounds in here. Uh, in order to put this away, uh, this comes out. You'll see the serial number here, so it's matching. Um, the barrel matches the stock and the handguard. Uh, this all will fit in here, but first we'll take out, uh, here is the shoulder strap. And this one is marked. I don't know the maker there, but there is like an iron cross symbol, but it's leather. And that will, that will fit right on here, these lanyards here and then also on the stock. You can see that. Here we have the cleaning kit. Uh, it's just like the last one. It's black, but the inside, the oiler is a little bit different. It's actually uh, the same company, and that's Waffen Oil. Uh, and you can see the brushes for the uh, shotgun part and then also for the rifle round. You can see that here. And there's the, there's the rod that uh, screws together. So that all fits right in here. And this looks like a deck of cards to me, but it's not. Uh, this is the shotgun shells in uh, 12 gauge. And it looks like uh, 10 pieces. And again, that's wrapped in plastic. Then we have, uh, these are the rifle rounds, 10, 10 rounds. Uh, and it's again, 9.3 by 74. I can't show you one because it's wrapped up. And same way with here. These, uh, there's a different maker, a few more rounds, and that's wrapped up, so I can't open that up. I do think I have a round over here I can show you, but before I do that, here's the uh, serial number of the gun is right here. And this is the, te they tested it, and it just goes through the test that they did. It passed the inspection, uh, includes a uh, firing test and it is dated uh, right down here, uh, 41. It looks like it might be May 27th of 41 that it was tested and then probably put together later because this is June of 41. 
May 27th is would be my guess right here. So this is the first time I've ever seen this included. I did find a box that has already been opened and there's two rounds here. So you get a size, you get an idea of the size of the round. Uh, and so I do have a box that is, is opened of the rifle round. Now, I wanted to show how this all fits together. I'm gonna put that back, put this back, put the manual in. Uh, there's room here, I guess, for more ammunition. Uh, this actually comes with these cloth covers, and I assume they are original because they fit perfectly, and they also have some dirt on them. So you know if they have dirt on them, they've got to be original. I'm sure no one would ever fake that. Um, but this, that was sarcasm. This fits right in here. Actually, I think it's this way it goes up. And then the handguard fits right here. This we'll put in this cloth. Beautiful gun, by the way. I'm, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, I wonder how much one of these would go for. Um, I used to buy them. The first one I ever bought was just the gun itself. I think I paid $11,000 and I thought that was crazy. Um, I'll go back to that. See this, this little ledge uh, takes the end, of this, this takes the, the stock right here and it fits on this ledge right here. And then all this gets held in place. See how this is contoured? And the whole thing shuts down and it's really, it's quite uh, tight, uh, doesn't rattle around and perfect for going in your Messerschmitt. Uh, by the way, Galand, if you remember uh, Adolf Galand, he actually, at the end of the war, had seven shoot-downs in one of the Messerschmitt's jets. Uh, there's the entire case, all goes together. I'm not, I don't want this to get banged around at all, so let's talk about price. First one I ever bought, uh, I maybe 10, 15 years ago, was 11000 Then I bought an entire case set like this for about 25000 I have seen them, I would, I'm not willing to sell this one because it's the last one I own. I've owned about 12 of them over the years, but I think they would probably be in the 35,000 range. If somebody has one, uh, they might not want to part with it for any price. But that is just really a quick overview and the definitive answer of why did they issue a Luftwaffe drilling in 1941. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. I enjoyed uh, going over it. And again, I want to thank uh, our viewer who sent me the article. Used to be here, Magic of Video, ta-da. Uh, the guy who sent me this, thank you very much. Uh, it helped me out a lot and gave me material for another video. If you haven't already, make sure you uh, subscribe to our channel because we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers and you can help us get there.